millions. No need for applause. You can just leave your uh, money on the on the desk as you guys are leaving today. Just I'd like to say, what if what if students tip teachers? I'm just kidding. Okay, so that's what we got going on there. Does that make sense? Kind of. A little bit. Okay. Now here's my question. Am I done? Why not? I haven't found the interval of convergence yet. So listen, y'all. What some people would want to do is use the ratio test with this guy. Is that allowed? <coughs> totally. What others would do is they would say, this seems easier. I'm only going to do the inter uh, uh, sorry, the ratio test with this guy. Could I do that? Why? Priscilla, go for it. Well, just because the ratio could be the same, so then it would be fine if the Yeah, so because the radius of convergence is the same, I could already see that this is just x to the whatever, so it's centered at zero, right? So you know that the interval of convergence is going to be um, start out as the same between these two, and they might actually be the same, but once I found the radius of convergence by using the ratio test for this, or that, this one's just easier. Hello, it's Nathan. Um, once you found that radius, then you would just go back to this guy and plug in the endpoint into that to see whether they converge. Should we do that? Let's do it. So, finding the initial interval of convergence, I would take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of So this is going to be negative x squared to the n plus 1 over negative x squared to the n, and this has to be less than 1. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm using this guy instead of that guy because this guy is easier to, to handle. And this is just the derivative of arctangents power series. And so if I find its initial interval of convergence, that's going to be the same as arctangents power series representation initial interval of convergence. And then I would just have to plug in the endpoint into arctangents power series. Are you able to follow that logic? Some of you? Let me say it again. We learned from the theorem uh, yesterday that not only can we uh, use term by term differentiation or anti differentiation to talk about power series of derivatives and integrals of functions that we already know. And moreover, they have the same radius of convergence. So because this is just the derivative of that, this guy's power series is just the represent, uh, is just the derivative of that guy's power series representation, and the intervals of con or, sorry the radius of convergence are going to be the same. So let me find the in interval of convergence here, the initial one. That's going to be the same as the initial interval of convergence over there. I just need to check the endpoint. So let's do that. I have this. These are going to cancel out. Watch, watch. I no longer have. Um, any n, so that limit is not affecting anything. The negative that's there, when I bring that outside the absolute value, is going to go away. And I have x squared, which by the way is also never negative, so really this is just x squared less than 1. What values squared will be less than 1? In between negative 1 and 1, right? 
So my initial interval of convergence is going to be negative one less than x less than one. But I don't know about the endpoints yet. So I need to check those. So I'm going to plug them into this guy. So when x is equal to negative 1, let's see what we have. I have the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. So what I'm saying is this is equal to the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the 2n plus, or so, not 2n. So I have uh, negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1. What happens if I have a to the m times a to the n? What do I do? That's equal to a to the n plus n. So I can add those. What do I get when I add n plus 2n plus 1? 3n plus 1. Divided by 2n plus 1. Okay, we have to think about this now. For any value of n that I plug in, what do I get right here? Meaning, do I get an even or odd value? Or does, it, or does it alternate? It alternates, right? When n is equal to 0, it's 1. When n is equal to 1, it's 4. The exponent is 4. So it goes 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. You keep going up by 3, right? So what does, what does that do? make this do? Alternate. So if we have it, this just makes it alternating. So if I have an alternating series and the denominator is of degree one, guess what we have? Something that's similar to the alternating harmonic series and we know that that is going to converge because it's alternating, right? The alternating series test if you don't want to compare it to an alternating or uh, alternating harmonic series, you could just do the alternating series test. Does it alternate? Yes. Do the terms get smaller? Yes. If the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 go to 0? Yes. Therefore, it must converge. Right? So this guy converges by alternating series test, which tells me that negative 1 is included. What about 1? So again, I'm going up to what I have up there, plugging 1 in for x. When you plug 1 in for x, 1 to the anything is 1, right? <coughs> Do y'all agree? 1 to the anything is 1. So really, when I plug in 1 for x, I really just have the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. What does that do? Converge by the alternating series test. So I'm going to say 4, negative 1, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1, which is 3. OK. There are only a few minutes um, remaining. Uh, I've given you enough for today. I can see by some of your